Today, I will read, I will read the first 23 of Sri Vilap Kusmanjali. But first, um, I would like to thank you, to thank uh, Zuniti, because since three years, every weekend, uh, she has prepared this, uh, who will read this Zoom conference. And she did this service so humble, so nice, and mm. wove a, a net between us. But uh, she's a bit tired of this silver, and she would like to to go to to give it to someone else to take this responsibility. And this is this is uh, my yoga shakti, and I would first really, really, really thank you, Suniti, so deeply that she has done this for us all, and announced you as the one who takes the responsibility. And thank you so much. And perhaps uh, the German-speaking devotees, we could do it a bit easier for her. Perhaps we could make a circle that each four weeks someone reads. So let's think about it. Not in this meeting. <laughs> so, well, there we are. Yes, I will start reading. Bowing deeply down and offer my obeisances unto the lotus feet of Gurudev and of the assembled devotees. This is really an expression of grace that we all are invited to be here and aware that we also we want to be here. We want to be complete conscious just now here with our full open heart. O oh, beloved of the Prince of Raj, when with this person, after washing your lotus feet, lovingly braid your hair with the beautiful fine garlands made by the florist girl, Namada. I repeat the verse. O beloved of the Prince of Raj, when will this person, after wishing your lotus, after washing your lotus feet, lovingly braid your hair with the beautiful fine garlands made by the florist girl Namada. Am I allowed to share my contemplations about beauty? I was, it was such an intense uh, topic for me this week. Because when there is beauty, there is Radha. In the presence of the beautiful, we immediately feel most alive for the beautiful meets the needs of our soul. This was a quotation of John O'Donoghue, Divine Beauty, the Invisible Embrace. In the presence of the beautiful, we feel most alive. And as Uddhava always emphasizes in his lectures about the beauty of Bhagavad Gita, that Sri Radha is the energy of Sri Krishna, namely loving, the, the act of love, loving. Beauty is the expression of loving. We feel immediately at home when we receive beauty. We receive it. We can't make it. Beauty is there. I only have to open my heart and be aware of this beauty. We have to stop our doings, to focus. Don't 
want to get it for ourselves. But to be in the association with this beauty. We can't measure beauty. We are not able to describe exactly what beauty is, but we know it for sure. We know exactly the difference between glamour and beauty and are disappointed by mediocrity. mediocrity. Is beauty rare? Depends on me. Am I open-hearted aware? Beauty doesn't cost anything. You can't pay beauty, but it is precious. It is precious. When we get a glimpse of beauty, we feel and know deeply this beauty is the truth. We slipped in soul consciousness. There is no time. Beauty is sat. We are in bliss, ananda. And this moment has meaning. And that is Udava's definition of knowing that something has meaning for me. Chit. Sat, chit, ananda. When we are aware of the beautiful. And beauty is always and only 100%. There is beauty or not. And the surrounding doesn't matter. Perhaps we can help to create it. We can give our best. But that something becomes beauty is a gift. And another attribute of beauty is astonishing. Wow, such a beauty. Just in this moment, my heart opens and soul is present. Beauty can happen everywhere. It isn't only the red gold glowing sunset over huge waves in Hawaii. Beauty is everywhere in the tiniest, perhaps in the ugliest, in the damaged face of a patient suffering from leprosis, in the difficult meaning meeting with my enemy, in the healing of an aching wound, in the process of leaving the body, there are moments of beauty. In the desert, there is beauty. This first moment in a fresh, early, dark morning, planet Venus is twinkling. And when there is no disturbance, my mind is calm and peaceful. And then you take your japa mala and you feel the first beat. Wow, this beauty, only to chant the holy name. Devoted. And if you are aware of beauty, you search for it. Always listening to the jingling of the ankle bells, aware to smell this fragrance, to bath and clean your tired eyes in the fresh water of the well of beauty. In this moment, of the beauty, the awareness of divine, of Sri Radha. You yourself feel deeply unworthiness and becomes humble. You 
fell down on your knees and only begs to serve this source of beauty, the personality of loving, Sri Radha, only to serve her, that she will meet her beloved to give him pleasure, for she knows she is the only one who can fulfill his desires. Serving this exchange, that is the goal. And what a beauty these Zoom meetings are. Gurudev holds us, takes us on his lap. We are leaning at his shoulder, em embraced by him. Each of us, this gift, we read and listen these beautiful verses, expressions direct from the soul, from the transcendental realm. There, there is only beauty. And we are care when we are carefully listen, we are enchanted. The tight and firm connection between body and soul loosened. We feel young and light. And really happy as in seamless water we slip in our swarup when we are absorbed in listening these leelas. There Sri Radha is. And again I would like to read the verse honoring this beauty. O oh, beloved of the Prince of Raj, when will this person, after washing your lotus feet, lovingly braid your hair with the beautiful, fine garlands made by the florist girl Namada? Commentary. In his Swarup Avish, Sri Raghunath Das has dried off Srimati's limbs after her bath and dressed her. So <laughs> we take a, have to take a pause to contemplate this. Raghunath has personally, or a Tulsi, dried Swamini. Imagine this, this beauty, wet, and you are allowed to dry her with, with really a soft, soft tissue, carefully. It's not rubbing that she gets dry. <laughs> carefully. And you are aware of this fragrance. And you, you are allowed to do this intimate service. And then, yes, when this vision leaves him, Raghunath cries and rolls on the bank of Sri Radha Kund. Yes, this, this is, this is pain. And he can't stand anymore. He has to fall down. And pain is one pointed. If you hurt your head, wow, it's one pointed. You can't think about anything else. If you do have some stomach pain, yes, you can't do anything. The two is all. Oh, pain is one pointed. And pain is, um, there are different kinds of pain. I think this is the most intense pain to fall off this um, soul consciousness and being being uh, back in the mundane world, losing this this feather light, lufty, and and be again in gravity. Feel yes, so he cries, and what he says. 
When will you fulfill the long-standing aspiration of this wretch by giving me my desired service? Ragunath's heart melts. It only can melt for the want of direct personal service. So there's something astonishing happens. He has he made this experience of, of drawing Srimati and loses his vision and falls down crying in desperate pain. And he only is humble. And humble means earth, humility. And this is humus. This is a fertile soil. And in this fertile soil, Swamini can put in a seed. And then He cannot give up hoping. And I think this is a glimpse of Sri Radhika's compassion. Because when he remembers the compassion of his beloved deity, his heart is illuminated by the light of hope. I think this is an act of mercy. He cried in pain, fall on his knees, fell on his knees, and was humble. Humbleness personified. I am unworthy. You, in front of you, who I am. But Srimati is the ocean of compassion. She knows about him. She loves him. So she puts in him this seed of hope and this illuminates his heart. This hope is nectar that revives the sadaka. It must come from Sri Radha. This hope is nectar that revives the sadaka who is suffering the pangs of separation. And in Stavamala, Sri Rupa Goswami prays, O destroyer of Agushura, the greatest souls like Shukadev, Ambarisha and others, have hardly been able to worship you. And when I hear about that, my heart that is totally devoid of any devotion feels pain. But when I hear from the scriptures and the sages that the waves of your compassion are flowing towards everyone from Lord Brahma down to the meanest creature, the drops of nectarian hope cool off my heart and soothe it. What a beauty. What a beauty. When the practicing devotee is immersed in remembrance of Sri Radha, Svarananishta, he feels as 
if he directly serves her and when he gives up that remembrance and returns to worldly thoughts, he feels as if he falls from heaven into the desert. Hope is what keeps the practicing devotee alive. One sentence. No? He, we can, he can, we cannot do bhajan when the devotee feels, I'm not going to get it. The hope for attainment makes a seat for himself in the heart of the devotee. Perhaps we should stop here and, and share about beauty, humble, humility, and hope. I think these are brothers and sisters. I have spoken too much. Sorry. Um, could you uh, read again this one part where it's written that he was the killer of Agasura because Guru was making beautiful point last week. This hope is nectar. This this hope is nectar that revives the sadaka, who is suffering the pangs of separation. Srila Rupa Goswami prays, O oh, destroyer of Agushura, the greatest souls like Shukadev, Amarisha and others have hardly been able to worship you. And when I hear about that, my heart, that is totally devoid of any devotion, feels pain. But when I hear from the scriptures and the sages that the waves of your compassion are flowing towards everyone from Lord Brahma down to the meanest creature, the drops of nectarian hope cool off my heart and soothe it. Yeah, very beautiful. Um, Rudolf was making the point uh, why killer of Agasura. Who is Agasura? Is a demon in the form of a cow. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, but I think I remember is is the demon in the form of the cow. And he kills him. And Gurudev have explained that cow is the holy um, animal in India. So he come this Geist in a holy form, but he is actually a demon. So this is the meaning he said it's we are all full of duplicity. We have cow's face, but inside we have uh, different uh, goals. We have not uh, we are not straight. We are crooked. Our ways are our inside and our outside are different. So he, Krishna, is the killer of this duplicity. 
So this can give us hope to go further in spiritual life that even the demon he is he's cutting off the duplicity. So maybe one day also he can cut my duplicity and I can become one pointed and um uh, so there I think um this could be a very nice uh, point to inspire our Gora Sundar or Tarun Baba <laughs> to maybe share something or Jayananda Prabhu. Chadirade, if I can ask also something after this Agasura. Here is said, uh, if somebody of, of you can say something about that, that have hardly been able, that great soul, har they hardly been able to worship you. So uh, if somebody can explain that, uh, in my imagination is uh, uh, that, uh, that mm -hmm. Krishna, mercy of Radharani, like he said after that, is uh, giving more hope because Krishna wants some endeavor. But I would like also to hear from all of you uh, what it means here that that uh, they have hardly been able to worship you. If somebody can say something. Thank you so much. So maybe later on Tarun Baba Goranga Sundara ex will explain more nicely, but I made some comment. So many great souls there. Here Baba mentioned Shukadeva, Ambarish, and others. So Ambarish or Shukadeva, they are more or less like a Shanta Bhakta. Or maybe we may say, Maximum Dasha Bhakta. So, this Rasa cannot worship with Radha and Radha Mohan. So, because there they are some, some tinge of some Aishwarya, maybe some Aishwarya Baba, or not real Madhurya. Not to even say, not to even Gopi Baba, Saki Baba, but to speak Manjari Baba. So this worship you means, I don't know this you, hopefully, probably our Swamini, or maybe Radha and Mohan. So this According to Rasa, we have many Rasa, especially in Buraja. Is Aishwarya Baba is Surakum, more Madura is prominent. Actually, Aishwarya Baba covered by Madura. And then, prominent Baba is Sakya Rasa, Basya Rasa, and Madura Rasa. And among, among the these three rasa, Madura rasa is most prominent, most relishable. Among the Madura rasa, real Madura rasa, no, actually, what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu want to give us is this is Babo Urasa rasa. Sometimes we say Unna Tojoan rasa, or generally speaking, we say Manjari Baba or Kinkari Baba. So, so therefore, generally devotees, ordinary devotee, like Shanta Bhakta or ordinary Dasha Bhakta, they cannot really worship of Radha and Moha in, in Madura mood. So that's uh, one sense this meaning, I, I think. And uh, so we are one sense fortunate because uh, by the mercy of Gurudev, by the mercy of our Anandas Baj Maharaj or some Acharyas like Raghunata Das Goswamis, we are some or other, we are some kind of 
uh, attachment or some taste to, to hearing, talking about、uh, this Bilapax Manjari, which is contains Babo Urasarasa. So, <laughs> I think Baba w a n t to say in this moment. So, if, so, so Tarun Baba, you, you are, you know, you are, please help us to understand more. You said, you said everything. Everything is there. You have to understand that this is,、uh, everyone worships the Lord according to his desired seva. Baba is saying in the beginning. So, When Baba is saying they hardly worship the Lord, you have to understand that this is coming from what is the highest worship. So, so everyone in his own rasa feels that he is doing the highest seva and he has the highest rasa. The Shanta Bhakta, the Dasya Bhakta, the Vatsalya Bhakta, the Madhurya Bhakta, they all have their own place and everyone has to be perfectly satisfied. But, and how comes the big but? Uh, what is the highest seva? Jayananda Maharaj said the highest seva is worship of the lotus feet of Swamini in Kinkari or Manjari Bhav. So, of course, this is a very bold statement and it can only be understood by Ragan Uga Bhaktas. When Baba is saying they have hardly worshipped, he doesn't mean it in a way, oh, they, they are not able to worship, but he is saying that according to the different rasas, The most highest and intense worship is that what Sudevi has, has, has read. So, washing and drying off Swamini and washing her lotus feet and, and braiding her hair. This is a million times more intense and more dear than making thousands of years of Agni Hotras or, or worshiping, you know, all these things what you read in the Bhagavatam. It culminates the highest seva is Manjari Bhav. So, therefore, Baba is saying, they, and you can see in Radha Rasa Sudhanidhi in the first three verses, not, not many Munis can understand and can worship. He says, Shiva cannot, and Narada Muni cannot, and, and, and all these, they cannot understand the glories of the lotus feet of, of, of Swamini and the Seva to them. So, Baba is not saying this in a disrespectful way, but in a way that we can understand how fortunate. The sadakas in Manjari Bhav are because this is the highest seva. And、uh, of course, I, I, I agree with Kanai so much. I am, the, I am completely different inside and outside. So we have, to, we have to become one inside and outside, like Gurudev is saying. I have so many material aspirations and I have to go more into spiritual aspirations. So this balance, it must be there. We have to be congruent, we have to be outside and inside. Should be the same. This is the goal. And like Sudevi said, of course, beauty and humility and hope, what they are all brothers and this whole, a one whole family. But what is keeping all these three things together? Very easy. This, the lotus feet of Gurudev. Otherwise, nothing will, will go on like that. We cannot recognize beauty. We cannot become humble. And we can also not understand it. Because we can hope will not be there if we are not in total ashray of, of, the, of the Guru Charana of Lotus Feet of Gurudev. We cannot understand these three、uh, relatives、uh, hum beauty, humility, and, uh, and uh, hope. So, the Lotus Feet of Gurudev and the Seva to his Lotus Feet, meaning our daily bhajan, it doesn't matter how much and when and everything. So, your daily bhajan, this is the Seva. To Gurudev, and if you please your Gurudev with this seva, all this you will recognize beauty, you will become humble, and you will have the biggest hope because the lotus feet of Gurudev are the personification of our hope. Otherwise, we have no hope in this existence. Look outside, you know, the world is becoming a turmoil. It's horrible what is going outside. So we have to look inside. And feel that the lotus feet of Gurudev are always in our hearts so that we can understand what you read about beauty. And、uh, without, without the lotus feet of Gurudev and without his mercy, without his kripa, it's like we are this, you know, that this example there's a honey glass and we are licking, we are licking the glass of the honey. 
So if, if Gurdjieff is not opening this class, we will always be licking the, the class. So this is very, very important for us to understand. And then we understand that actually this is the highest and highest and highest seva what Gurudev has given us. And we are easy to forget about the importance about these things. Every day we have to remember, oh my God, this is really something I have to do every day, Archanam and, and Puja and Bhajan and Diksha and Japa. And all this is done with the feeling that we are close with Radhika and with Gurudev and Guru Mantri. And only then can we understand these, these connections. Gairati, okay. sorry if I talked too long. <laughs> so I repeat, when the practicing devotee is immersed in remembrance, as Tarun has encouraged, of Sri Radhika, the remembrance of Sri Radha, Smarananista. Then the devotee feels as if the devotee directly, directly serves her. And when he gives up that remembrance and returns to worldly thoughts, the devotee feels as if he falls from heaven into desert. Hope is what keeps that practicing devotee alive. The devotee cannot do bhajan when he feels... But, so, so Devi, so Devi mm -hmm. we have... Uh, sorry to uh, interrupt, but we have yes, to sir. understand Baba is giving here a very, very high example. So we, we now, we, everyone is now sitting there and is thinking, oh my God, I'm not falling. I, I'm, I can, I, I'm not falling into, I'm not coming from heaven and falling into the desert. Baba is speaking here. This is Rati. This is, this is our Sakti. You know, this is what, what gives us hope to attain. So we should not be discouraged that we don't feel that because now we can think, oh my God, I can now think I'm sitting here in the glass, but then I can I can read a newspaper, then I can watch a movie. So I'm not falling from high heaven into <laughs> the desert. I'm not dying of separation. This is because we are in the course of anartha nivriti. At least I can speak for myself. So when we when we go through anartha nivriti, this is what Baba is saying. This is giving us hope. This is what gives the practicing devotee hope that one day we can have these feelings we cannot artificially create it but it they will come so just that we understand there is nothing there is uh, not that we are not hopeless but we can also not think oh i don't feel this i give up so this is coming madhurya kandambini tells us it will come at one point that this will that we for us for me it's more like Oh, the exception is when I remember Radha and Krishna. The majority is material consciousness. <laughs> That's me. So, so now it should be the other way around. It should be more. Most of it is a uh, smaranam of Radha and Krishna, and only little bit of material life. But according to your adhikar, you will feel that. So we should not be discouraged. Baba is speaking here about pretty high platform of. Of, of, of bhakti, don't be discouraged. It will come if we continue. Yes, hope is what keeps the practicing devotee alive. We cannot do bhajan when we feel I am not going to get it. The hope for attainment makes a seat for himself in the heart of the devotee. Such a beautiful sentence, huh? Again, the hope for attainment, what you said, Tarun, makes a seat for himself, for this attainment, in the heart of the devotee. So, so they be, uh, Okay, go down. Yes, Goranga Sundar, please. Goranga, please. Like Tarunji said, actually, this is the Bhava level. This is very high level. We should understand, really, 
that when the hope really sits, take a seats in the heart <laughs> completely, in the heart, it means that devotee already attained Ashakti and Bhava level. And this is the first ray of Prema. Mm. But like Tarunji tried to encourage all of us, actually the hope is starting from Shraddha. In the beginning stage of faith, there is of course hope. So young devotees who are just in the beginning of their spiritual life, they also feel hope. And because they receive some faith, faith brings hope. Without faith, there is no hope. But in the beginning stage of like this kind of faith is quite um, weak, let's say, Komala, very changeable. And the more a devotee is advancing, his faith also is advancing, is becoming firm, and automatically his hope is becoming more and more and more firm. And when he attained the position of only one pointed, and when he attained position, I am completely in love with my beloved Ishtade, Radharani, then love brings him to completely condensed hope against hope, like Taranji said. You know? So the hope is the progressive and starts from the beginning and it's always a very, in a subtle way, invisible way, is nourished by the prema. Because prema starts from Shraddha, automatically without prema, which is not visible on the beginning stage of life, the symptom of that prema is the faith which brings devotee to the Sadhu Sangha and it's increasing more and more and more and more and more and finally the hope is so strong that actually devotee, he, he sees all his disqualifications. But because like Rupa Goswami said, I have a faith in the words of Acharyas, I have a faith in Shastras. This is the same thing, words of Acharyas and the Shastras. I know that you are so compassionate. And this is the sign of someone who is really on the level of burning eagerness. So by listening, like these kind of personalities, our faith is increasing, our hope is increasing, our spiritual feelings are increasing, and ultimately our eagerness is increasing. And here, what you, Sudevi, read a few times for us, uh, I will go a little about the words of Sri Rupa Goswami. Baba is so expertly saying, is putting the words of Rupa Goswami who is addressing Krishna, destroy of Agasura. And then he is the next sentence. He says, but devotee who is immersed completely in Shirada, he feels that he felt from heaven to desert. But Rupa Goswami, he is suffering here because these kind of devotees, they didn't, like Jayanandaji and Taruji explained, they didn't realize completely the sweetness and beauty of Krishna in Vraja. And in very humble way, he is saying, who am I to speak like this? to feel a pain for them, where are they and where I am? In a very humble way, he is speaking, but in that way he is glorifying Vrajendra Nandana. 
they don't know his sweetness and his beauty. They know his other opulences, but they don't know his sweetness and beauty. And I'm suffering because of that. But who am I to suffer because of this kind of, for this kind of sublime personalities? So he is establishing how important it is to understand, I, I think uh, Jayananda just said, very clearly this difference between Aishwarya and Madhurya, which is present in Vrindavan. And Rupa Goswami feels a pain for those who still has attraction for Aishwarya. Ras. But in a humble way, he say, who am I? to feel that, but I have a faith in the scriptures. And then Baba is saying, but when practicing devotee is immersed in remembrance of Sri Radha, this is another level. He feels directly, as he directly serves, and so on, and so on. And for him, the hope of devotee who is just Bhagavan devotee is not the same like the hope of devotee who is Radha's maidservant. It's not the same. He feels the pains of separation for his beloved Supreme Personality of Godhead. But the pain of separation of Radharani's devotee, Manjari, like Tarunji, glorifying Manjari level, is not possible to compare with the pain of other devotees. And this is the greatest gift of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his as close associates who really understood and accept Goranga like Radharani. This is the greatest pain and at the same time greatest rasa, relish moment. So we need to listen and to in, be infused with their hope. Mm -hmm. With their hope, not with the hope of ordinary devotees, Aishwarya devotees. We need to expose our heart to be infused with the hope of Manjaris. This is completely another hope. This is completely another pain. This is completely another love. And we should feel it. Sorry. Radhe, Radhe. Also, that this wonderful sentence, Baba is saying that uh, the seed of hope is placed into our heart. So what is the material of this seed? This material is pre more precious than gold and more precious than all the jewels. So the material of this seed, which is placed, the seed of hope, which is placed into our heart, is made of the kripa of Gurudev. So this is more, more, more precious than anything. This seed is placed into our heart with, by the mercy of Gurudev, like the Bhakti Lata beach. In, in principle, it's it is the Bhakti Lata beach because without the Bhakti Lata beach, there is there is no hope. So both are connected. Without receiving the Bhakti Lada Beach, there is no hope. So Gurudev is the Alpha and he is the Omega to bring us to the lotus feet of Swamini. And I'm the one who has opened up my heart and be humbled. <laughs> so we are three. <laughs> So, so I'm sorry, just so we can say that uh, this bija, Bhaktilata bija, seed of Bhaktilata bija is actually greed, to have greed and to have hope that I will attain even th to be convinced to attain that. <laughs> <laughs> the seed, the seed, the seed of, of bhakti is not from this world. So the seed, I asked one day, I asked my Gurudev, so the, the jiva, you have to imagine the jiva as a fertile field, because many already say that the Bhakti Lada beach is already in the heart and is covered by Maya. So this is not Gaudiya Vaishnava Siddhanta. So 
The seed of bhakti is given into the heart of the devotee of the sadaka by the kripa of Gurudev. And only those who have that seed can give it. Because what is the seed made of? The seed is made of Sambit and Ladini Shakti. So that is bhakti. So bhakti can enter into our heart by the mercy of Gurudev. And you have to understand that our heart should be like a fertile field. Jiva Goswami is saying the Jiva, it has not yet the functionality to perform Bhakti Seva, but it has the propensity, it has the capability, capacity. So like a field, a field uh, on the, if you go outside, the field has nothing in it. There is nothing in it, but it has the fertility. It has the capacity to grow apple seed, the apple trees, to grow wheat, to grow all kind of different things, beans and blah, 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 many millions of different things. So, but what is essential? The farmer has to go there and he has to put the potato seed inside. He has to put the potato in. He has to put the wheat in. He has to put all these things in. Otherwise, how it will grow? So Gurudev is coming and our heart should be like this fertile field. It should not be dry by speculation and kiana. It should not be hard. It should not be too soft by completely being, like Prabhupada said, being sentimental. Then if it's too watery, the seed will not grow. If it's too dry, the seed will not grow. It has just be the exact fertility and this is humility. This is to be but in the Bhagavad Gita has said, with a humble mind, approach a Gurudev and inquire from him about the absolute truth. So our heart is the field, and in this field comes the Bhakti Lada Beach. And the Bhakti Lada Beach is not from Tatashta Shakti, and it's not from Maya Shakti. It is from Swarupa Shakti. It's, it's coming from above. It's coming into our heart from those who have received it, from Parampara. And what essentially is the Bhakti Lada Beach is that it enables, like, you know, if you have no processor in your computer, what can go? Nothing can go. So the same, if there is no Bhakti Lada Beach in the heart, Bhakti will not function. It will be a blue screen all the time. It will not work. So as an example, so this creed, this creed for doing Bhakti is not essentially the same as getting the Bhakti Lada Beach, but when you when you when Gurudev is seeing Bhakti Vinod Thakur is saying, when when Gurudev is seeing the earnestness and the readiness and the the eagerness of the sadaka, he will do all the arrangement. Gurudev will all do it, all arrangement will be there. And a true Sadguru, a true Sadguru will see what will. So I can give you an example. Sometimes my Gurudev was approached. Asking people asking for Diksha. Gurudev was looking at them. He said, Yes, come in one year. So after one year, people came. So then they said, I want to get Siddha Pranali. So Baba said, Yes, come in five years, come in two years. So the true Sadguru, he sees what is the what is right now meant for you. And that means that these people, they are so connected with Samashti Guru that they are so connected and they know what is essentially for you. And this Bhakti Lada Beach is only the beginning. And then there is this wonderful example Mahaprabhu is giving. The Bhakti Lada Beach is growing and you have to take out all the weed which is killing the plant. So all negative uh, uh, characteristics we all have, lying, cheating, you know, all these propensities, they are destroying the Bhakti Lada Beach. So, and that is our job every day. So the eagerness and the greed can only come if you have this Bhakti Lada Beach. If you have the, otherwise it's not real, it's not real greed. Uh, Shila Chiba Goswami is saying in the Sandar, but there is greed and there is greed. <laughs> so the real greed means really, I, I cannot say that I have real greed. Real greed comes when you advance through the stages of Bhakti and then Lopa is getting, and the beginning it's, it's a mixture of different things and then the creed is getting thicker and thicker and thicker, and then you can you cannot do anything in the material world anymore, uh, and you are too much attached to Radha and Krishna. So this is asakti and bhav, the higher stage. So we begin like Goranga. He said we begin with our stage where we are, and we follow our Gurudev, and we hope that this seed is in our heart. This seed of of uh, hope is in our heart, and the Bhakti Lada Beach is is the essential part. Without that, 
we can never proceed through through the stages of bhakti. So it all depends on how we take care of this most precious gift. And like Goranga said and Chainanda Maharaj said, this is not just any seed we receive. We received, you received it from Sadhu Maharaj through a bona fide parampara. I received it from Baba through a wonderful parampara. So they are all behind us. You know, there are these systemic, systemic uh, in the material world, they do this systemic uh, when they put people in and, uh, you know, this, I don't know the English word for it, systemische Aufstellung. So uh, in our bag, in our bag is a whole lot of, a huge parampara of Sadgurus and Sadhus which are protecting us. And our mind is very easy to forget this. So this is also a great hope that behind us is a huge armada of very good, very strong people. So I myself, I always forget this. I think I am alone and I, I struggle here, but we are not. So the moment we sit in front of the altar, the moment you read the people who are behind you, you start with Sadhu Maharaj and I don't, this is confidential who comes then. I have my parampara and we, we every day we should look. I try to every day look at this sheet and repeat and read their names because they give us power. They give us strength. So this is what means the Bhakti Lata Beach, to be connected to an army, like saying, like an army of, of wonderful, wonderful souls who are there, still there in their mantra form to help us. So, and our Bhakti Lata Beach is not that we are now some elitist group. It's not true. Everyone who has their Bhakti Lata Beach feels my Bhakti Lata Beach is the best. Mahaprabhu is saying this. The people in in Vatsalya Bhav, they say my my Vatsalya Bhav is the best, and it's true for you. It's the best. So for us, Manjari Bhav is the best. There is no exclusivity. There is no elitist thing. But Manjaris they treasure this Bawala Sarati, which is. When you have this Bhakti Lata beach, deep inside this Bija is this Bhavala Sarati, which is coming from the lotus feet of Gurudev. Wow, thank you. Uddhava Das hopes to see the Yugala Kishore I want to share something. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> How nice. We should. That's what sucks. Well, thank you, Sudevi, for reading so nice. It's very. Bring us in the feelings. Really. So, Buranga Sunda, he shared so nice that even in the beginning, there's some hope. Gurudev also explained always first we have some faith, then there's hope, then there's love, and then there's God. So, and this hope is growing. And Tarun, he then also speak about this very high level of rati or asakti even. I would even say that on that level, hope is the only thing that remains in the heart. Because the heart is purified. At that level, you realize you're totally dependent on mercy. Before that, with our anatas in the heart, we have desire for gyan, we have desire for karma, we think that we are the doer. So, how we can have real hope? if we are not one point, then it's not real hope. But when the heart becomes purified, hope is the only thing that remains in the heart. And on that level, hope and greed are the same thing.
you realize that you are totally dependent, totally unqualified, and you have no other way to ask for the mercy, but you have so strong <laughs> greed for that, so strong desire that there's always hope. You cannot give up hoping for that. But on that level, the heart is already very, very pure. And humbleness coming, automatic. The humbleness is there then, already. I want to share one more thing that should even give us more hope, even on our level. We know that Mahaprabhu, he came to distribute praying. But he also came specially to give love and separation. The Dasis, Rupa Manjari, Rati Manjari, all they came to get that experience of love and separation that is even the highest. Even Radharani say, if she must choose between union and separation, she always would choose separation because then she can see Krishna every day. But we know that the manjaris of Radharani, they are never separated from Radharani. They are shadowed. 24-7 they are with Radharani. So, in the spiritual world, they never experience love and separation. <laughs> and they came with Radharani, with Mahaprabhu, to get the nectar of being a sadhana, to getting the nectar to practice the love and separation. So, <laughs> we are very fortunate also to be sadhaka. <laughs> that is amazing. Jai. Jai Radha. Jai. Buddha Vadasa hopes to see the Yuga Lakishori with their sakis. When meditation becomes very deep, visions start coming. Although the Goswamis are eternal associates of the Lord. I, I go in, easy in the car. Uh, oh. You know, name, but you. then I see, oh, so late, I must call you. Um, you are in a, in a way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I, I was the mean, we are right, and then I look, so, oh, so late. Yeah, yeah, but uh, also me, yeah, yeah. always uh, too late. Yeah. No problem. <laughs> Uh, Madame Bukhar, could you, you mute your mic, please? <laughs> Welcome, but... Maybe when you, when you like, I can also drive from Porto. When you like, I can also drive from Porto. When you like. Uh, Madame Gopal? When it's Please. too much to drive, I can also Could you drive one mute out. your mic. Ah, no problem. Relax. I have to. Yeah. Yeah. I tried. Although the Goswamis are eternal associates of the Lord, they still relish the flavors of sadhana. Take a multa. Calling out. Really? 
with more lamenting. Uh, because I I try to um, yes, not possible. Uh, Sorry. Okay. Uh, maybe maybe the host can mute Madame Gopal. Who is hosting the meeting? Scenario, no? In Switzerland, yeah, big, in... big moto. Oh my god! In Switzerland, yeah. Yeah. obviously uh, nobody is. I, I will go and fast. check. I will yeah. try but, to uh, put down. Not, uh, the... Sorry, Rade. No, no, yes. See, see, also the camera. Um, how do you say cartello, no? Sign. How do you say? Sign. 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 Ah, yeah. Sign. Limit. Yeah. In a locality. Ah, uh, uh, okay. The limit. Uh, was uh, 50 kilometers per uh, hour. Okay. Yes. And how fast is it, right? I go at uh, 72. Okay. Oh. Not fast. But, but not, not in the not in, in, uh, in the center. Mm -hmm. uh, near the near uh, the in Origio, but not in the in the center of uh, in, uh, in the street uh, uh, street on. Uh, uh -huh. Very, 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 for me, it's very slow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How much? And I don't uh, understand why is he not here. Uh, 500. Uh, I think he, he doesn't know that, in, uh, that he uh, is in this Zoom conference. So I think it's uh, uh, kind of an accident. Ammunizione. Ammoni, come si dice? Ammunizione. Ammunizione that if uh, I think only Bada Mohan can do this, the Bada Mohan account, right? Uh, the same, uh, yeah, the same, uh, yeah, I think uh, um, the host, the host is already uh, running. Well, <laughs> My yoga is here. Yeah. <laughs> My yoga is here. <laughs> no, sorry, on the Thursday, you think the red light. Uh -huh. In front of Godhart. I read the light. Yeah. In mm. front of Tunnel Gotardo. Si. They are on the way to Italy. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Ammunizione <laughs> lieve. <laughs> Crossing the pass. <laughs> but they uh, make but they, flash. They make ch flash. Ch flash. flash si. yeah. He's um, getting some pizza. Yes. <laughs> well, so. Oh, now it's better. Yes. When many. It... Oh, those are Goswamis. Are eternal associates of the Lord. Yeah. They still relish the flavors of Sarana, calling out and lamenting. Ah, Swamini, be merciful to me and take me into the kingdom of devotional service. Shall I read this again? It's so beautiful. Oh, those are Goswamis. <laughs> I mean the Goswamis. The Goswamis are eternal associates of the Lord. The Goswamis still relish the flavors of Sarana. Calling out and lamenting, Ha ah, Swamini, be merciful to me and take me into the kingdom of devotional service. And then Raghunath's mind and heart return to the kingdom of transcendental pastimes as he gets a vision of his next gradual service. In his spiritual identity as Tulsi, Sri Raghunath takes Swamini into the dressing room and washes her lotus feet again, again in this dressing room before Tulsi starts drying Swamini's wet hair by squeezing it in a white cloth and perfuming it with fragrant aguru, that means aloe incense. I repeat it. In his spiritual identity, Tulsi, as Tulsi, Raghunath takes Swamini into the dressing room 
and washes her lotus feet again there. Before Tulsi starts drying Swamini's wet hair. By squeezing this black hair in a white cloth. And then perfuming it with fragrant aloe incense. How expert she is in that service. Upasana means staying close by. And Shrida Narottama das Takus sings, I serve Radha and Krishna in life or in death. And I look at their playgrounds and their pastimes day and night. Wherever the adolescent couple performs their pastimes, I will be as a companion of the Sakis. And when a devotee is fully absorbed in Smarana, it is as if the devotee directly serves the divine couple. Smarana means mental association. For example, a Brahmana from Prahistanapura burnt his finger after sticking it in an offering of hot sweet rice, which he had just cooked in his meditation. So intense it was that the cooked rice in meditation cooked rice and then offered, he put in his finger and it, his finger burns so vivid. Srila Raghunath Das Goswami got physically diagnosed indigestion from overeating in his meditation. He got sick because in his meditation he had eaten so much of this prasadam. Srila Krishna Das Babaji from Govardhan broke a bottle of oil in his meditation and all of the people that lived at Manasi Ganga could actually smell it. And the body and clothes of Srila Madhusura Nadas Babaji of Soyakund were covered with colored powders after he had mentally played holy with Radha and Krishna. So vivid. These examples show the miraculous transcendental power of devotion. If devotion is false, then what is real? Devotion is a portion of the Lord's innate energy of his Swarup Shakti. Devotion is a portion of the Lord's Swarup Shakti, of the Lord's innate energy. That is devotion. Just as devotees have spiritual discussions which with each other. Similarly, the Sadaka should also awaken his desire to have Ishtagustis with the Sakis and the Manjaris. Stay with them, sit with them for the words of the great devotees have great power. The scripture, the scriptures, and the great saints say 
that when the devotee's devotion ripens, the devotee can see his beloved deity in all the moving and non-moving creatures. The scriptures say it, and the great saints say it, that when the devotee's devotion ripens, the devotee can see his beloved deity in all the moving and non-moving creatures. The pure devotee sees only Sri Krishna when he looks at the moving and non-moving entities. He sees the moving and non-moving beings, but he does not see their forms. Everywhere the devotee perceives his beloved deity. This was a quotation from Srimad Bhagavatam. No, it was from Chaitanya Charitamrita, Matya Lila 8. Now, a quotation from Srimad Bhagavatam. He who sees only his worshipful Lord in all the living entities and who sees all the living entities in his worshipful Lord is the greatest devotee. Devotion makes the Lord perceivable through all the devotee's senses. This is the greatness of devotion. And this is, isn't this okay. beauty? Yes, please. So, Devi, I just want to say, because I now I see <laughs> from your readings and Baba's words, actually, Baba is giving few real examples, living examples from our Acharyas, Rasik Acharyas, how mental association is re actually real association if it's connected with transcendental relationship. Whatever devotee thinks in his mind and which is connected with transcendental personalities and transcendental pastimes, this is reality. This is only reality, actually. Because devotee, through this kind of mental association, he is developing his spiritual senses and is coming in touch with spiritual personalities and their spiritual senses, which reflect through the mental association of devotee in his heart and is purifying his senses. And because of that, he can relish devotion or sadhana. And Baba is giving just few very clear <laughs> and very nice, <laughs> sweet <laughs> examples of devotees who were being so absorbed in Lila Smaran. First of all, they have been absorbed in their own spiritual identity. Then, through this spiritual identity, they became absorbed in Lila Smaran. And then miracle happened. Then miracle happened even on this Sadakavesh. Even in this Sadakavesh, devotee felt that his finger is burning. So this is the proof which is helping us Sadakas that when we are meditating on such a experiences and such a cases, such personalities, it makes our faith and our hope in our sadhana 
to increase more and more. This is why it's important to listen to the pure words of pure devotees. This is why it's so important to have mental association with them by reading, by talking, by remembering about them. They are our best friends. They are our best friends. We don't have other best friends. But we should learn how to associate with best friends. Not on our own way, but to allow them to guide us, to model us according to their will, or ultimately to the Radhika's will. Thank you so, so much. Radha. Thank you so much. Sorry, if I understand nicely, Guranga Sundara, the first thing is Swarupanishta, to be connected in this way, like is described here. First is Shraddha. Then Guru Nishta. And when we say Shraddha, it must be Guru Shraddha also. Shraddha cannot develop without Guru Shraddha. And with this Guru Shraddha, we are coming to the Guru Nishta and also Ishta Nishta. This is simultaneously is going on. And when this Guru Nishta or Ishta Nishta, Ishta Nishta brings more Guru Nishta, Swarup Nishta is appearing very firmly. And this is, like you said, now this is the stage when devotee is deeply absorbed in mental association, smarana, and then by the mercy, it's not by because of his deep as uh, meditation. The deep meditation is the vehicle, but the devotee depends what will happen. If, yes. if you say, if you say, you know, Swarupanishta cannot happen if you don't have Guru Nishta, because who is giving you Swarupa? Swar Gurudev is giving you Swarupa, so you must have faith in the one who is giving you the Swarupa. So Swarupa Nishta is never in the beginning. If it is in the beginning, who gave you the Swarupa? So first, like Guranga said, Guru Nishta is first. And then this, this uh, pl team playing with Ishta Nishta, you will figure out what is your Ishta Nishta and these things. And then when Gurudev is giving you Siddha Pranali, only then can you develop Swarupa Nishta. Everything else before is speculation. It is not bad to sit when you have no guru. It is not bad to to desire for a form of like you know if you want to be a coward boy, if you want to be a manjari, if you want to be a parent. Yes, all good. You can do this and you can meditate on this, but only if you if it is cemented and confirmed and declared by Gurudev. Only then Swarupa Nishta can come into play. So in our in our process, we approach. Our beloved Gurudev, after Diksha Mantras we have received, we approach our Gurudev and we beg him to reveal what is our Sita Deha. And Gurudev sees, okay, now one year, two years, Gurudev is saying how many years, how much time it needs until you can have this information. And when you get this information, this is day one of Swarupa Nishta. Then before it may be Swarupa Shrata or Swarupa Spekulationski, you know, <laughs> but it should be really, it should be confirmed by Gurudev. Otherwise, what is the use? There is no use because, um, I mean, there is, of course, use to go in the right direction, but Gurudev um, is giving you the information about the Ekadash bar or sometimes a little less according to your digestive movement. So it is very important that Gurudev is giving you this information and then, Swarupa Nishta can really grow. And again, it's, it's, it's interacting. If you, if your, if your Nishta, if your faith in your, if your manjari form is growing, so also 
your Guru Nishta and also your Ishta Nishta again is growing. So this is very, very, a very dynamic, a dynamic uh, uh, play because the more you, re the more you can uh, be, be, be comfortable. I don't, I have not realized my form, but I am comfortable, comfortable to know what I am. So, so, so that means you can sit down and close your eyes and take a step out from the material circus and try to be a manjuri as hard as it is for a man <laughs> to imagine oneself as a young child, woman, young, young girl. But it gives you a very, very secure comfort. And then again, if you have this, you can again develop your, I mean, what is our Ishtanishta? Radhika is our Ishtanishta. So if we, develop our Svarupanishta, it is very, very possible to, 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 to get a, a Ishtanishta because if you are a Kinkuri, one last, um, if I can share, um, last week or so, um, I had a nice realization. Um, it may be fake, it may be, I don't know, but I was, I was uh, meditating uh, and then at one point I felt that not only we have, it always said, you have to love Radhika, you have to love Radhika. But in this moment, I also felt by, by some mercy, I don't know, some, some, some drop came. I felt that she loves us. Not always I can feel this because I'm too stupid and too closed into material environment. But sometimes in this moment, I could feel, oh, she also loves us. It was when, when I was, it was when I was, I can say, Frank, we, we are doing this uh, Chinese, uh, there is one Chinese healing, oh, Japanese. Jap Japanese, there's one Japanese, maybe Chayananda knows, what is the name? Chin Chin Yutsu. Chin Yutsu, you know this? Chayananda Maharaj, Chin Chin Yutsu. You, you heal, it's like, it's like prana healing, you go through all these energetic points in your body here and everywhere, and then you heal your, your, your aura and this stuff. So when I was meditating uh, on the heart chakra, I was thinking heart means love, means Radhika. And at that moment, I could feel that she loves us. And I was like, oh my God, what is happening now? That she, not only do we have to love her, but we can be sure and comfortable that she loves us. I didn't see her. I didn't hear her. I didn't smell her. I didn't hear angle bells or anything like that. But I had this very deep i don't know realization that she loves us and if we if we have this moment always in our heart that actually she loves the king Guris. it's not only that we have to love her but she loves us and this was really cool to feel this and because not always i feel that but at that moment no. i was sure she loves us this was a moment of beauty yeah and I see it more as mercy of as a mercy, yes, but of course this because is, I'm so this dull, an expression of mercy. Yeah, I but, didn't see her, but I could feel that uh, this is this is also what we have to always think about that we are we are truly loved. It's not that we are alone here in this world. We have friends and family, but ultimately, Guru and 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 Radhika, they they really love us. So this was yes. this was very a very cool experience. Not always this happens. <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes sometimes should increase. it can. <laughs> should increase. <laughs> Please join me. So very good. Tarun Baba is, you know, the other day is very, very nice. Because like I say, mother always loves child or children. Even though children feel, oh, mother does not love me, but mother loves child or children. So this, we don't know, sometimes some treatment or sometimes some do business, but, uh, you know, we do sadhana, we, we always praying and then sometimes mercy is coming unexpectedly because mercy means we cannot beg. Mm -hmm. Mercy is like, a, like, a, you know, Already. yeah, mercy is there, but, and also mercy we could not expect. This time should come mercy. No, is this, this only depend on, on, on Swamini or our Guru, Guru Manjari. So sometimes mercy come, you know, immediately 
or even we do ordinary work or ordinary reading, you know, or ordinary like a dealing, talking with family or friend, sometimes realization coming. That's I, I feel Tarun Baba's realization real. And we should believe <laughs> always Swamini loves us. Also, Guru Dev always loves us. Even though Guru Dev chastising us, <laughs> you know, sometimes, you know, criticizing us, <laughs> anything, but Guru Dev loves us. This hope, this faith can become hope. Then hope become love. This Guru Dev's <laughs> teaching, you know, we, we are so neophyte. Sometimes we don't realize, oh, Guru Dev does not like me. Oh, you know, Guru Dev does not like this devotee. You know, oh, Swamini does not like me, does not like this devotee. No. They are loving. But we are so full. We are so covered. We don't realize. Sometimes, <laughs> you know, by good fortune comes. <laughs> like, like Tarun Baba, we realize it. That's my, my fear. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I don't know what's about the time. It's... I have one question. Yes, please. I want to use that opportunity. Everyone is here can maybe answer. I don't understand the position of Sukadev. We know that he is the parrot of Radharani, so he must be very close to her. But here in the beginning of the lectures mentioned that even Ambarish and Sukadev, they cannot, cannot worship lotus feet of Radharani. I remember that this subject also is discussed in the hidden path of devotion. They speak about that. But for me, still, it's not clear what is his rasa and, I mean, Radharani teaching to him also some slokas that he can speak <laughs> in the right moment, like, so maybe someone can explain Tarun Baba, Jayananda Maharaj, Goranga. You know, Tarun Baba, Goranga, Sunda knows. <laughs> so, my... I, I, I only know that Sukadev, Sukadev, uh, what we know from him, I'm not very well read in what is, what is the position of Sukadev and the parrot. I heard that to be a parrot also has some special meaning, but uh, in his earthly form, when we see him throughout the Bhagavatam, he was, he was, first of all, he was realized in the impersonal Brahman. So he was he he realized Brahman, and then he he got the mercy of his father, and then he realized Radha and Krishna, but not in Manjari Bhav, definitely not Manjari Bhav. This is for sure. And uh, and the parrots, not they are not in Manjari Bhav either. I think they are there decorating the lila, but not in a real super active form. I'm not quite sure if Shukadev is in the Nikuncha Lilas. This is beyond my expertise, but I cannot imagine that he is there when she is enjoying with Krishna. I don't think so. Um, I have no information about that, but basically Shukadev, why always Shukadev will is uh, as an example, because he was on the way of Brahman realization and then he got the mercy of Bhagavan realization, but not up to Babu Lasarati. So maybe Goranga, Sunna and, 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 and Chayananda know more. But this is my humble understanding. So Goranga, Sundar, could you some comment? I can give some short comments like uh, it, wa it was never my subject of so much investigation you know and research but i remember prabhupada what said in the uh, nectar of devotion he said that uh, he is in shantyaras like a staiba like his staiba and the point with shantyaras they neutralize for those devotees who are not familiar 
neutral Ras. So what does it mean neutral? It means I know everything. I know all Rasas. And I'm relishing little bits of all Rasas. But no Rasa I'm relishing so deep. Because I'm Shantya. I'm the neutral. And Prabhupada is saying actually that animals in Vrindavan, they are in Shantya Rasa, they are helping even this Yugalaki shore loving pastimes in different phase. But like, like the Tarun said, they are not participate in active role. Because Prabhupada gave I remember this and it, it stuck in my mind very logically, actually. He said, Rasa can be exchanged only between the similar entities. Rasa cannot be exchanged between animal and human being. They can have some attraction, attachment, loveliness between each other, but they cannot exchange fully, completely, their loving relationship. So in that moment, like a shukade, like a parrot, as Gorachandra was saying, he was witnessing even maybe most confidential pastimes. But he is not sweeping the floor he is not putting the garland around, which is broken around loving pair who are completely intoxicated. He is not relishing their parakya bhava even so deeply like manjaris are doing. Because manjaris are embodiment of Radha and Krishna's parakya bhava. They are embodiment of seva but they are also embodiment of their mutual love. And because of that, Radha and Mohan, they don't have any hesitation, fear, shyness, and so on then. But parrots, different animals, they can relish their love, but not in an active, active service mood. So for that we should a uh, uh, little bit meditate about relationship between the same living beings and relationship between different living beings. This is also I, I also I don't think that the Shukadev because there are those parrots who wake Radha and Krishna in the morning and warn them that Chatila is coming, but I don't think that Shukadev is one of them. I don't think so. But this is. This is complete speculation. I, I never heard who is who in the in the animal world. <laughs> no, uh, so I, I just I just repeated what I read yeah. in Prabhupada yeah. and few lectures yeah. by him. I agree. And I was I contemplating, but without so much uh, yeah. investigation. But I but it for fits. me it fits. Yeah, it fits. Like, log emotional, rasic emotional yeah. logic. It fits. You know, and like our guru, they will say, I don't know anything about that. <laughs> <laughs> so, but this just to satisfy <laughs> maybe inquisitive of my beloved Gora Chandra. And yeah, so. I'm also not very interested in that subject, but no. I want to clear the doubt, no? because yeah, this yeah. perfect going in my mind for a long time. So now I can take Rest. it out. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very Hearing much, because I also took possible. out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> doubt is not good to keep, no? even if the subject is not your main focus. No? Yes. But what was, what was the doubt? I'm not clearly understanding. I'm thinking that he is higher than Shantaras, that he is a that he knows no. about the intimate relation about Radha and Mohan no. when he's speaking slokas in favor no. of their romantic mood. No? So then I'm thinking, no. 
he has different higher than shant no so mm. that was my doubt mm. oh kecha de comment de tv actually shuka deva is shantarasa but also paupante but in imbued madura rasa but his vision is always neutral so if we if we read bhagatam he 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 is speaking in neutral position like a third person but if we read birapak smanjari this one baba means one certain perspective we have to always think we always feel that is sukadeva missing means sukadeva does not have this certain certain lasa certain feeling which we need to taste really go deep so that is shukadev is missing so like a goranga sun you know goranga sundara tarumba must say this point is different so like i say if we if we read fiction sometimes writer like neutral position sometimes writer like a position sometimes writer like b position so why why guru dev say stai baba means we are should we should not see neutral position or even saki position all the way we have to see feel in the one position this babo urasana manjari's position so mm-hmm. therefore shukadeva even though he knew but the position is always neutral third person mm-hmm. means he cannot involve the deeply but mm. this this manjari baba we need deeply involved deeply feeling one point mm. deeply same feeling with radhika but shukadeva is missing this point that's my my <laughs> yeah you can you can see this very clearly how neutral there is this one set there is this one uh, scene in the bhagavatam where shuka uh, vyasadev and shukadev are walking and they passing by naked girls in the river the, the girls are bathing in the river and when vyasadev is coming they are covering themselves when shukadev is coming they are not covering themselves because he sees everyone he sees everyone completely equal and he's making no difference and then he doesn't even see them as gopis or mandaris so like you said jayana is on always on the equal and the, on the neutral platform so this was also an example that vyasadev he is he, he 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 could see the young girls and then they covered themselves but chukadev he was completely he doesn't even care he was and he was running around naked so he doesn't even care about that so she is he is completely on a on a neutral and 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 different platform so in chaitanya charitamrita goranga in his conversation with ramananda roy he was celebrating this shantara saying hey, yes they are very good they are so detached yeah but is there something more <laughs> is there something more and ramananda roy starts to speak about dasyaras and he said wow this is very interesting why because they can be involved in direct service and then chaitanya mahaprabhu say okay this is very good is there something more than dasya and so on and so on and so on so this is secret of rasa <laughs> radhe radhe well, thank you very much very nice thank you everyone may i may i read the, this verse again so that we can uh put it in our heart and meditate on it further on and say goodbye to you before i just want to suggest to devi that you continue also next week if you like oh no <laughs> <laughs> uh, no please not no, not now i will we will talk about it no okay. <laughs> oh beloved of the prince of raj when will this person after washing your lotus feet lovingly braid your hair with a beautiful fine garlands made by the florist girl namada so i bow down deeply for this beautiful exchange <laughs>